Hey guys, Bobby here, and if you've got a Sony camera that you are filming with and looking to make the most of the custom settings and buttons on these cameras, but you don't know where to start, then this video is for you. So I've messed around with a variety of settings for all of the custom buttons and other things since we moved over to Sony a couple years ago, and I eventually settled on what I feel is the best setup. Now this setup lets me easily access the things that are most important to me and switch between different shooting setups so that I spend as little time as possible setting up my shot and therefore not missing a shot. Now this is the setup I use at every wedding we shoot as well as commercial and corporate and personal films. And this setup should work on most Sony cameras. I'm gonna show you uh, on a Sony a7S II, but we also use a similar setup on our a6500, though it does have less custom buttons available. And I believe this should also translate perfectly over to the a7R series and the new a7 III as well. Now first up, let's look at the custom buttons. These are gonna be C1, C2, C3, and C4. And all these are a physical button with one function assigned to it. To assign these, you go into your menu, you scroll down to custom key settings, and you'll see the custom button one, two, three, and four in there. I have C1 assigned to white balance, which is incredibly important on a wedding day, moving from spot to spot and in constantly changing lighting conditions. You should be constantly adjusting your white balance. Now I use a combination of the preset options as well as Kelvin temperatures, but I access it often and therefore I have it assigned to C1. C2 is assigned to the focus magnifier function. The Sony screens are pretty awful for pulling focus. And while I often do have a monitor attached, this lets me punch in quick to check my focus. Even better, you can use this while recording and it won't affect the image. Now I like to have this quickly available, not only because I use it often, but because if I do have to go through the menus and hit a lot of buttons to get there while recording, I'm gonna notice a lot of shake in my footage. C3 is for adjusting my focus between auto and manual. I use auto when I'm on a gimbal for the most part and manual when I'm not. However, there are times on the gimbal where I wanna start behind a wall or something in the foreground and I don't want it to pull focus. So in any of those scenarios, I can switch between manual and auto quickly. Lastly, C4, which is the little trash can icon as well, is for clear image zoom on my setup. I don't use this as often as the others, but my gimbal lens is a 16 to 35, which can be a bit wide in certain scenarios. Now I think clear image zoom gives a bit of quality loss if it's punched in all the way, but around 1.6 times and under, you shouldn't notice loss of quality, which lets me get a bit closer. Next up are the preset profiles that are available on the wheel on the top of the camera. Now I have three different profile setups. One of them is on the film strip icon, which will stay at whatever setting you left it at. And then the numbers one and two on the wheel right next to it are a custom profile that you have to save in the memory settings. And every time you go back to them, it'll be the exact saved profile, regardless of any settings you may have changed while filming. One note on these, it will save pretty much all the settings that you set, things like resolution, frame rate, shutter, ISO, picture profile, etc. So make sure to set it exactly how you want it, especially the shutter speed based on your frame rate before saving it. So to make one of these profiles, you'll want to be on the number that you want to set it to on the wheel. Get all of your settings exactly where you want them to be, go into the menu, find the memory option, and then select the appropriate number for the number on the wheel. These three settings are absolutely essential for me, especially in filming weddings, as they let me easily switch between my three most used resolutions and frame rates. Now to note, I'm gonna go over my settings for these, but mainly assign your three most used settings as they may be different than mine. So I have the little film strip icon set to 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. This is what we deliver most of our projects on. On a wedding, I'm shooting more and more 4K, but this is still my most used setting and therefore assigned to the film strip icon. The number two on the wheel is what I swap to when I wanna shoot 4K, and I have it set to 4K at 30 frames per second. As I said, I find myself shooting 4K a little more often this wedding season, and I like shooting it at 30 frames per second as it gives me the ability to slow down to 80% in post. Now, I personally don't love slow motion if it's very apparent that it is slowed down. So this would be things like people and things like that, interactions. And I know that goes against how a lot of people film, especially for weddings, and it's just a personal preference. I find that 80% rate to be the maximum that I can tolerate. And even then you'll see most of the shots in real time for us. 
Lastly, the number one on my wheel is for high frame rate with the intention of slow motion. Now I think 120 frames per second is just too slow for me and I don't love the additional crop. So I have this set to 1080 uh, resolution at 60 frames a second. This is my least used setting, but I do like to have the option to quickly jump to a profile with the intention of slow motion. On a wedding, I'll film a lot of details with this, especially if it's on a gimbal, as it allows me to smooth it all out a bit better, and you can't tell that slowed down when you're shooting something like a dress. Last but not least is the function menu, and I like to think of these as a hotkey to get into the variety of lesser used menu options instead of having to find them one by one when you need them. To set these, you'll go into the menu, function menu set, and you'll find a list of the different tiles that you can set. So to go through these as far as the tiles that I have set from left to right, top row, and then bottom row, they are as follows. First up is my steady shot focal length. This is where you're going to choose uh, what your internal uh, stabilization is set at based on the lens that you are using. Some lenses do auto adjust for this and some do not. Next to that is my steady shot adjustment, whether I want to go auto or manual. Again, it will revert to auto automatically if it can automatically set to it based on the lens you're using, or you can switch it over to manual if you'd like. Third on there is steady shot itself where you can turn it on and off. The fourth one is my peaking level, which I don't actually use too often, but on occasion I will, and I like to have that accessible. Next is my zebras, which will help in overexposure and just exposing my skin tones and things like that properly. Again, I don't use this as often, but I do on occasion. Next to that and finishing up the top row is my audio recording level. It's a great thing to have easy access to and while I don't change it too often, I like to have it there as I am sometimes switching between different settings on my Rode video mic and therefore needing to adjust my record settings appropriately. Now we move into the bottom row and I actually only have a couple things on here that I use. So some of them are the default and I don't really use them. In the bottom left, I have my picture profile, which I do use on occasion, not so much for weddings. I'm pretty much shooting with it off and in the standard uh, color setting. Um, but on some corporate things, I have shot Cine 4 or S-Log or something like that. So I do want it easily accessible. Next to that is flash compensation, which I don't use. I believe that's the default and I haven't changed it. Next to that is auto white balance, which I believe I did put in there because I used to have this in my function key instead of assigned to a specific button. But again, I now have that assigned to custom one. Next to that is my auto HDR and DRO. Um, I do have that turned off on almost every single occasion, but occasionally I will turn it on. Uh, next to that is the creative style. Again, I'm shooting pretty much standard for weddings. Every now and then I'll mess around with something else. This is also sometimes in weddings where I will go to the light setting because it will handle um, some DJ lights a little bit better. But for the most part, I'm in standard there. And then lastly is movie slash HFR, which I have set to manual and I believe that's a default setting. I don't think I use that one either. So again, these are things that I find myself using every now and then, but not often enough to overtake any of the custom buttons. Now I think these function settings are a bit more personal preference based on what you use. And like I said, I don't actually even use all of them. Some of them are still the default settings. So that's pretty much it guys. The rundown of how I use my custom buttons, my custom uh, profiles up top and my function menu to help me get the most of my camera. Again, I think these are very important because this could very easily be the difference between getting a shot that you love and missing out on a great opportunity entirely if you're messing around on your settings. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you're doing something differently with the custom buttons or the wheel options function, menu settings or things like that, let me know in the comments below. I'm always open to other ways to do it. And as always, if this video helped you, please subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.